Hello, my name is Vignesh, and this is going to be Math Lecture 13 in the Math Lecture series. Today, we'll be going over statistics. So there are basically two main things in statistics. There's like the I can't say the word. statistical measures, which is basically where you have like, like you define like a number, like the mean, median, range, and stuff like that. And there's also like sample sizes and like experiments part, where like they'll give you an experiment or a sample size, and you do, and you do like do something with that. But yeah, so first we have uh, I can't say the word statistical measures. Wait, so like so some of them are like mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation. So the first mean that more and plus most of this stuff you probably already like heard of in other math classes, but it's not it's not bad to go over again. Mean is just the average of all the numbers. So you get like one, five, six, seven. You just you just add one plus five plus six plus seven and divide it by four, and you get your you get your mean. And then your median is just a middle number. So like if you want, if it's easy if I just give it, if I explain to a number set. So we get one, five, six, eight, nine. You have five numbers, right? So your middle number would be your fifth number, with your third number, which is six in this case. And also you need to make sure your numbers are from low to high, so like one to nine. So your, your middle number would be your median. So six would be your median. And if you had an even number of numbers, so like let's say you had one, two here, then it would be your in between your two middle numbers. So here five and six would be the middle numbers. So your median would be 5.5. 5. 5. You take the you take the average of both those. But yeah, and your range is is just simply your like you take you take the, your lowest number and your highest number, and like you subtract the highest minus the lowest, so nine minus one, and your range would be eight. And your mode is whatever number is represented the most. So it doesn't work in this data set, but if you had like one, five, 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 six, seven your mode would be five because it's, you, have, you see five the most often. And standard deviation is how, like you don't have to calculate this on the SAT, like there's a formula to calculate it, but you, you, you most likely won't have to calculate it. However, what you will have to do sometimes is like be able to recognize what a high, which, which data set would have a higher standard deviation or lower one. So standard deviation is basically how spread out the numbers are. What that means is, so let's say you had one, five, six, Nine, no. One, five, six, ten. Then in this case, your mean would be around. I, b I believe your mean would be five point five. So what your what your standard deviation is? It's how spread apart, how how sep how far apart these numbers are from your mean, or and these numbers too, obviously. All your numbers are from your mean. So in this case, it's pretty spread apart, right? However, if we sh like made this three, five, six, eight. Now in this case, these numbers are closer to, uh, we have the same mean. However, these numbers are close, all the numbers are closer to the mean, the mean. So it has a lower standard deviation because it's less spread out. So that's basically what I mean by spread out. I hope that makes more sense. So the, so the, so the more, like the higher the difference between the, the, the numbers and the mean, the, the, like the, the, higher, the higher the average difference is, the higher the standard deviation is. So that's basically all the statistical measures. Now we have like we have samples. Samples are basically where you have a large population, like let's say you have all the Asians in California, and then you take like a small group of them. So like I randomly select a hundred Asians in California, because like if because like what like experimental or like scientists do do if if, if they want to like make an, have an experiment or like I like do a, make a poll, they they have to like they can't ask every single Asian in California. Like that would take way too much time and. It's probably it's pretty hard to get everyone to answer. So what they would do is they would randomly select a group of people. The randomly part is important because if it's not random, then it's not an accurate sample size. I'll give an example of that later down. But yeah, so basically you want a randomly selected sample size of, of all Asians, so like say 100 people. Usually, your your a good sample as long, on the SAT as long as your sample size is like a, a, over 20, it's okay. Like usually, that's usually how it works. Obviously, there's always going to be exceptions, but usually if it's above 20, your sample, you, 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 there's the size of your sample is not the problem. Obviously, it could be other issues, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll just point with the rambling. So yeah, so what, what you can use with a sample is, like let's say you have 100 voters and you, you find that 60% say they'll vote yes on a new law, then you can assume, this is in a perfect world where your experiment was amazing, you're, you're the greatest scientist in the world, and that means that 60% of all voters will vote yes on a new law. So like you're generalizing what you saw to all voters. However, that's not how the, how experiments work. 
chances, like, it's highly, highly, highly unlikely. Was basically statistically impossible that you're that you're that with a hundred voters you'd be that act that you'd be exactly accurate. Chances are you'll have a margin of error. A margin of error is basically like the 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 plus or minus of how much like you think you're confident that the mean of the whole generalization will be. And margin of error will be larger. The, the, the higher the margin of error, the le- the 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 worse you think the, the worse your experiment is. So usually that means if you have a higher margin of error, that means your sample size is lower. So like if I had like 500 voters, my sample, my margin of error would be much lower. But yeah, so margin. So let's say I had a margin of error for five percent in this experiment. So what that means is, I when, when I generalize it, I won't say sixty percent of all votes. I'll say fifty-five to sixty-five percent are likely to vote. Like it's likely that 60, 55 to sixty-five percent of voters will vote yes. This likely part is important. Never say an absolute statement because like, even even with a margin of error, polling data can differ depending on who you are asking. As you, if you ever follow an election, you would know that polling data can be inaccurate sometimes. And d- depending on the source, you'll find different polling data. So yeah, so always say likely. So if you ever see an absolute statement as one of the answer choices, almost always try to find the, uh, the non-absolute. Absolute statements are like a very, of, of stuff you should try to avoid like it's a plague. Or I guess if you want to be more context, like more like up to date, you could say you want to avoid like it's coronavirus if you want to make a recent. Oh yeah, whatever. Okay, yeah. So judge. Okay, ne- next we have judging experiments. So this is basically where they'll give us an experiment and they'll ask us to make like a judgment about it. Like, oh, like is it bad? Is it good? Something like that. So like for ex- like, so, like for example, if they gave us the same experiment up here where they said they took a hundred voters, and in this case I'm saying let's, let's say they, they said they took it a hundred Asian voters, it's random, randomly selected Asian voters, and six percent they'll said they'll vote yes on a new law. Then in that case, your the, the question can ask. What's the most highest group that you can generalize this information to? So yeah, so yes, you, you can say that of those hundred Asian people, sixty percent said they'll vote yes. You can also say if if it was randomly selected, you could say around sixty percent would of, of Asians in California, of total Asians in California, would vote yes in this law. Obviously, it's like I said before, it's not going to be completely accurate. But I'm just saying like you can generalize this data for the for the larger group too. But what you can't do is you can't say that it's all Californians if, if you just use Asian, Calif- Asian Californians because different demographic groups like white, African Americans, and Latinos can have different, like different opinions. And yeah, so that's why you can't just have based on that. You, you can't say it's going to be all Californians. And you also can't say it's going to be all Asians in America because a- Asians in California may have different views because of the different experiences and the Asians in like Texas. So this is obviously this is like one specific example, but it's basically like it kind of shows how you have to use like logic a lot of it. A lot of these questions are like logic-based questions. I feel like these are like the most the most similar to the reading questions in the math section of statistical questions like these, where you to judge an experiment. And another type of judging experiment question you can have is where they ask like what's an issue in an experiment. And there's also this common issue with experiments. One of them is this, the way your sample, like how you got your sample size. Obviously, like I said, you, you want above 20 usually, and you want a larger sample size. And you can also sometimes have issues where your sample isn't randomly selected, or the way you select your sample is, is bad. So like, for example, if you don't have a randomly selected sample, then you can't generalize it to things. It's so like, for example, if an example of this would be, let's say, let's say you, you have a bill about building a new park. And you went to the you went to an existing park and asked the kids and asked the parents there if they wanted a new park. You, chances are the parents who already are at a park would want a new park to be built, but that doesn't represent the whole of, of citizens in that city. So that's why you can you, that's why the way you get your sample can be very important. Also, another way is like if, let's say you you email like a mass email to a bunch of people that you selected saying do you want this park built or something like that, but it only like twenty percent respond. That's a bad experiment because when you give people the chance to like, respond or not to respond, it makes it inaccurate. Because maybe, because then only people who are really passionate about the issue will respond. So, like for like movie movie reviews are a big example of this. When people type of reviews online, it's usually like, like when random, obviously not critics, but like when random people like type of movie reviews, it's usually if they really love the movie or really like or like really hated the movie. So you find the extremes, which, which doesn't represent the whole population. Another issue is the the issue between correlation and causation. So let's say let's say you had like one person he he if you had two people one person who runs a lot another person who bikes a lot and you found that person A is smarter than person B. There's a correlation right now between the person who's smart smarter and the person who who, who ran. 
However, it doesn't mean that running makes you smarter than biking. Like just because just those two are related doesn't mean that they cause each other. So that, that, that can be a huge issue. And now I'm gonna going over, now we, we had the palms at the, at, at, at the end of this thing. So as usual, th this, these notes as well, the palms that are posted in Google Classroom, I suggest you do the palms at first and then like, and, and then you can look over. I, I'm gonna even do a couple of them just to give you a taste of how it works. And also just a disclaimer, I do get these palm sets from col a, a college prep book, like an SAT math textbook from College Panda. I highly recommend you check it out. You can see the, you can see the link for the textbook in the description below. And if you're watching the video and on in the description for the Google Classroom, I highly recommend you buy the, you, you get the textbook because it, it gets more in depth for the topics and it, and like it, they, they have pretty good questions, like examples and stuff. So I, so yeah, so these palm sets, as well as the palm sets for the other videos, you probably know this already, but they are from College Panda. So yeah, so big things for them, I guess. Yeah, so moving on. So the first question we're going over is number three here. So here we have a graph here and it says books read and it's like ranges of books that are read and the number it, it editors. Usually what, this is like, this is like a frequency graph where it, it has like how many people are in each data set. So the histogram above shows the number of books read last year by 20 editors. So this 20 number is important. At a publishing company, which of the following could be the median number of books read by the 20 editors. When you have like a frequency graph like this and you well, have to find the median, but you first do you wanna see the total number, 20 editors. And I wanna find which numbers do I want. So in this case, it's an even number. I want the tenth and the eleventh. And I want to find the average between the tenth and eleventh data set. So what I would do here is I would see how many people are in each of these data set, and I would go down the line because these are. This is based on like, let's say you have this right here. This would literally just be like zero. Let's, let's say this is three. Let's just I'm just gonna, it's like it would be three, 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 and then since there's five here, it'd be six, six, six. Like so it would be something like that. Well, like it's, it's it's that type of data that they just go in a different format. So I think it's easier if I just show it to you. So, so I'm trying to find 10 11, that's my magic number. So first I have three here, I'm trying left to right. So that three doesn't reach me to 10 or 11. So, so it, it, the, the median is nine in this data set. Five, and now here there's five, now I, now, now I have a combination of eight. However, that, that still doesn't reach me to median, so that means it's not here. However, once I add this three here, I get to 11. So, so my, my 10th and 11th number, if I go from low to high, is in this re region right here. So I know that my median has to be in this week. It has to be between 10 and 15. So if it's asking which of the following, I want the number that's between 10 and 15, and that's 12. So that's why B is the right answer here. The other one I wanted to go over was number 12. The table above shows the scores for Jay's first seven math quizzes, which of the following are true about his scores. So we have we have seven scores, and it's here, here. And I'm gonna write this in order, just because I know, because I know you're asking about median. So you always want to write it from lowest to highest. You don't, you don't go from here. You don't go like the way they give it to you. You go from lowest to highest. So lowest is 75. Next we have 83. Next we have 87. 87 twice. And then we have 90, 91, and 98. So those are seven numbers. And now, so the first, so I want to know which the statements are true. The mode is greater than the median. So what's the mode? The mode is 87 because if I if I cross off here, the middle number would be this 87 right here. So, I, so I, the mode is 87 because there's two 87s and everything else only has one. The median is also 87 because since there's seven numbers, I want to find the fourth number, which in this case is going to be the 87 here. So that means the median and the mode are equal to the not not one is not greater than the other. So one is wrong. Two, the median is greater than the mean. So the mean we already said is 87. Now I want to find the mean. Now, if I tried to find this mean, what I would do is I would get a calculator. And then I would plug in these numbers and then just find the mean like that. This is the calculator section. Or you could just do it on your head. You can obviously do it by hand, but it's much easier to have a calculator. So 75 plus 83 plus 87 plus 87 plus 90 plus 91 plus 98 and divide that by seven and you get like you get 87.2 something but we already know that's greater than, than 87 which is why that means the mean is greater than the median so two is wrong now let's see if we already know that three has to be correct because there's no neither option but but just in case we check the range is greater than 20 the range is the highest number minus the lowest so 98 minus 75 that's 20 that's 23 which is greater than 20 so three, so three is correct. 
which means B is the right answer. Three is the only correct statement. Now we on to the next problem set. The, uh, the, the, this one, I want, also want to go over number three on this one. A university wants to determine the dietary preferences of the students in its freshman class. Which of the following survey methods is most likely to provide the most valid results? So A, selecting a random sample of 600 students from the university. The reason why A is wrong is because it's asking for students in its freshman class. Like, if we want to know one of you about freshman class, we don't want to ask all the other classes, like seniors, juniors, and all those people. Because maybe older people have different dietary restrictions or preferences. So that's why A is wrong. B, selecting a random sample of 300 students from the university's freshman class. So far, that seems okay. So, so far, that seems like the right answer. B. C, selecting a random sample of 600 students from the university's freshman class. This is the same except here it's 600 students instead of 300. And the more students, the better the sample size. Like I said before, that means the lower your margin of error is going to be and the more represented, the more easier it is you can generalize that information. So, so far, B is, the, B is no longer as good as C is. C is the better answer. So you want to know likely to provide the most valid answer result. D, selecting a random sample of 600 students from one of the university's freshman dining halls. So here in your mind, you think it has freshmen, that's university, it has a 600, but it also adds the dining halls. And, you, and here they try to trick you because it's like, oh, dining halls. We want to know dietary preferences. So that seems like we should put the dining halls question. However, that, that, that's not the answer you want because you want to know for its entire freshman class, not just the people who go to the dining halls. Because maybe, maybe like richer kids can afford apartments so they don't eat at the dining halls or something like that. So like you don't know if the if like not if the people who eat at the dining halls are not an actor are, are not the same are not like the exact same people who are uh, like not every freshman eats at, eats at the dining halls. So that's why you can't you can't say that all the freshmen are the same. Like all the all the freshmen in the dining halls are representative of all the freshmen. So that's why D is actually wrong and C is the right answer here because it is represents all the freshmen, not just the ones who are at the dining. Dining hall, because you want to know for all the freshmen. Not, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Thanks, it freshmen a lot. <laughs> okay, moving on to number fifteen. Sorry, that's not number. That's number fourteen. This is number fifteen. The length of a blue-spotted salamander's tail can be used to estimate its age. A biologist selects eighty blue-spotted salamanders at random and finds that the average length of of their tails has a 95 confidence interval. I didn't talk about 95% confidence interval. What that basically means is, it's like the range for which you think the answer is, where your 95%, ignore the 95% the com, confidence interval is just a name. It doesn't mean 95% of it all. But 95, it just means that it's likely that the range is between five to six inches. So it has a 95 confidence interval of five to six inches. Which of the following conclusions is the most appropriate based on the confidence interval? 95% of all blue spotted salamanders have a tail as between five and six inches in length. Like I said before, that's not the right answer because 95% confidence interval is just the name of the of name of the statistics. It's not the actual like it's similar to margin of error. Standing, but it's not the it doesn't mean 95% are in between five and six. It just means it's likely the mean is between five and six. So B. 95% of all salamanders have a tail. That, this, this is even worse because in, it, here it's all salamanders, not just blue spotted. We, we only know about blue spotted salamanders. See, the true average length of the, of the tails of all blue spotted salamanders is likely between. See, we have the likely, so it's not an absolute, and it's, and it's average length. That's, that, that's what 95% confidence interval means. So, so far, C is the right answer. And D, the true average length of the tails of all salamanders. This is wrong because, like I said before, we only know about blue spotted salamanders. We don't have data for all salamanders. So, C is the right answer there. So, that's basically the questions I wanted to go over. Obviously, there's more. So, go click and go to Google. You can go to a Google Classroom. The Google Classroom code is in the link in the description. So, yeah. So, that's basically it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, if you have any further questions, you can email us, email us at Empower Prep. So, yeah, that's basically it. Have a nice day and best of luck on your SAT adventure.